I am unashamed. What about you? So welcome to Unashamed. Uh, our our overall stock has gone up today on the Unashamed podcast because Missy has joined us. Mine especially. My yeah. better half. <laughs> Jason's stock is way up today. Uh, thank you, Missy, for agreeing to come and, sure. and be on the Unashamed podcast. The one thing I hear the most from especially our female fans, and by the way, it's definitely growing because everywhere I go now and and speak and talk to people afterwards, there are a lot of women that come up and say, I never miss an episode of Unashamed, and please have the wives on more. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm a little nervous today. Usually Jace is nervous because he came home yesterday and said, no, you called me. He said, can you please be on the podcast tomorrow? I did. <laughs> But guess who asked me to ask you well, that? Well, I ne- I've never heard you say that before. So Ow. I thought, what is going to happen today that I'm not aware of? Well, we've been we've been wanting to have one of our wives back on again, and so you happen to be in town. And We're in a transition. We're transitioning, transitioning books from yep. Luke to Acts in an overall way, and we don't want to run off and leave Zach because he's special. <laughs> <laughs> Although we hear he's in a conference, we're not sure what he's conferring about. What's <laughs> What's funny about you saying that is I was going to say before you said that, but once you started talking, I didn't want to dare interrupt you. <laughs> Good choice. What I was going to say was, is this is the first time we've had you on the podcast that I wasn't nervous. And then you said you were nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to remember, Jason, all that's said about this. Mystery, mystery. You never know where Phil's going, babe. (laughs) Three times. All of this is a mystery. And that all these people could come together under one head, even Jesus, members of one body, and share us together in the promise in Christ Jesus. Somewhere in that, it is a mystery to the world. Yep. They they would not think we were that close. Right, it's in the heavenly realms, even. Oh, yeah, I know it. Yeah, That's we'll Ephesians three, where we were talking about it. Then got dad's juice is flowing on Ephesians. <laughs> no, so I thought he was going to make the point in Ephesians five and with mystery on why Missy chose to marry me. So I'm, <laughs> That's been a mystery ever since it happened. Well, I use it in our speeches, uh, you know, as an evidence of God. So I got a lot of questions to ask, Missy. So we're oh just going to start diving in because um, I have a few, and then I know we talked about a couple of things in past podcasts that I love getting clarification because it, when Mia was on the last time Mia was on, I just I just point blank. I said, no, "Your dad is prone to exaggeration." You you realize that, Mia? She said, "Oh, I know that fully." It, it, it's in our DNA. I know no, it no, is. There's no, a... no, no, you can't blame that on DNA. Oh, yeah. this no, is, sir. As no, sir. You came from no. the line of Jubal. We came from the line of no, exaggeration. Sir. No, that would be the K. Robertson line of exaggeration. That's true. That's right. If there's DNA, it comes. It's from learned. Do you That's... like my Jubal line, Phil? I did that for you. But Mia fully agreed with me, which I so appreciated because I put her on the spot. But she's like, "Oh no, you're right." She said, and then she was telling me stuff about her dad, which was great. I think I've been getting better on it. I wouldn't know. I stopped listening. <laughs> We so, we said that we sorry, said you couldn't listen to it. it. <laughs> it our, our entire thinking is 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 comes to a head when all this went down. The death of Jesus, His burial, His resurrection, coming down to earth, the spirits given for all people. You add all that up, you say there was a when when Jesus came on the scene. He and he alone created such a idea as all this. Right. I mean, heaven and earth coming together. I mean. Well, and we, Jason. I think it's a, it's a, what's the word? It's a warmth in all of that. I mean, yeah. it's a. It's it, what well, changed all of our lives for sure. Well, that. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, is not an exaggeration. All of that actually happened, That's and even right. more than we could ask or imagine, even more than we could dream up or fathom. He did it. That's, That's awesome. That's where well, we Jay are. says, Missy, that if it was not for Jesus, y'all wouldn't be together. 
True. Because that was the draw for both of you. Mm-hmm. That is true. Because Very you're so true. different, which is true. So, so we, we just didn't have a physical type of relationship, even though, you know, I'd kiss on you every once in a while and you kiss me back, <laughs> which is great. But compared to, I think, most relationships, it was it had a greater spiritual presence. Would you agree? Somehow, both of us at a young age were thinking long term in our personal lives. And you had seen what happened with your parents and you wanted their new relationship. And I had never known anything different than just you figure it out and you work it out. And so looking for someone who would do that with me, I realized that at a young teen, teenage time yeah. in my life. And thankfully you did too. Yeah, well, my number one goal back then was to try to get as many people to heaven as possible. And you can attest to that. I, I was, that's what was driving me at that point in my life. I, I just was excited about sharing Jesus. And so I came out of my shell and started, because to share Jesus, you have to interact with people, which is the first 15 years of my life. I did not do, I did the opposite, you know. So through that conversation, you know, I happened to have a conversation with Missy. And uh, so, that's just kind of how it got started. Well, and we just did a, our marriage refresh uh, this past weekend, and it's interesting because we were this whole the the theme was true grit was the theme. Of course, Anna Wasn't and that Trey, a western with John Wayne. It was, it is, and well, the men like that. And the well, women. I was super excited when I heard about the theme because True Grit is one of my all time favorite movies, both the original and the remake, which is rare. And so when Lisa and I spoke during our host talk, that's what we talked about. But my point I was going to make with, with what you guys are describing about how your relationship began, again, you guys struggle. We all struggle. It's not like anybody's perfect. But when Jesus begins at the center, it begins in such a more healthy place. So we're talking to so many couples that had no Jesus, either for one or both, and so now they've come to Christ. Well, they brought all the baggage with them. Yeah. So when you talk about true grit, we're talking about trying to hang in there. Of course, the grit, which this is Anna Tomlinson, who's a good friend of both of ours, who who came up with this, and it's, and it's really good. So it's it's an acrostic for grace, radical obedience, uh, intentionality, and then transparency is the T. So that was the four points. And so we basically taught that over the course of the retreat. And, you know, like you would think, there were there were some people there that gave some testimony of what God had done to get them to the place. But ultimately, it ended with, if I, my relationship with God first isn't where it needs to be, then we're really going to struggle with our relationship with each other. And so that has to be the starting place. But for a lot of couples, it's a restarting place. Well, if you think about the, the foundation, we built our relationship on the foundation of the rock. Jesus was the foundation. Right. But the, so many couples like you're talking about, their foundation is each other. Mm-hmm. You know? And even yours and Lisa's testimony about oh, how yeah. her foundation was you. Correct. That didn't do her much good nope. for a long time because you failed her because you're human. Right. And so trying to build a foundation after you've already, you know, put the boards up for the walls, you got to go back in and try to put the foundation underneath a house you're already building. It's going to be a lot more difficult than if you start with the rock. Yeah, no doubt about it. And then we talk about about that, about what, what can we do by leaving here, by having God where he needs to be to fill the places that a spouse can't possibly fill, but can be a great companion to walk with you once mm-hmm. he's done that. So I wonder, the reason I brought up the retreat was that since it was a Western theme, because True Grit, so we had like the Western stuff, the the gifts they get, and everything was about Western. And even the night we did our banquet, they encouraged people to dress Western. And a lot of people went all out. You know, some do, some don't. There's 65 couples there. But y'all's name came up. And so this is this is what I, I've been holding this for two four podcasts, Missy, because I was going <laughs> to oh. bring this up the first podcast. So y'all's name came up in the podcast, I mean, in the podcast, in the uh, marriage retreat. So it was, we had our banquet, and then we were going to do square dancing after the banquet, which I've never participated in. And there was a guy who's a local guy mm-hmm. that does square dancing. Yes. He's a redheaded guy. And so he's like explaining to this group of people about square dancing and what he's about to teach us. I think us. we've used this guy. He's you awesome. Have. He's awesome. And so yeah. what he said was, he said, now, he said, now I want to tell you, this is going to be fun and just follow my lead. And he said, I'll tell you what, what, 
Jace Robertson said. And so I'm standing over there. He has oh, no idea. I don't remember what I said to this fellow. <laughs> so he said the next day after Jace did, did this with his daughter at a daddy daughter banquet, mm-hmm. he told his wife Missy, who told me because she saw him. You saw him in an airport mm-hmm. or something. Uh, said that this was one of the top five nights of his life. Yeah. That was an obvious days. exaggeration. <laughs> I'm kidding, babe. You got to know how this works. Oh, my works. goodness. Y'all made fun of me for exaggerating, but now when I said something like this, I'm not well, That's why I brought it up, because I want to hear clarification. First, if it was that, because I was laughing, I thought, Jay's and Missy are being talked about at this uh, Retreat. Well, it was an in, it's an intentional night. Talked about intentionality. It's an intentional night that the church put together and hired him to come in and really so easily teach how to do yeah. some dancing, which is intimidating to people, especially COC people who've never danced. We choreographed at school. Oh yeah, I can always and, tell the ones in oh, settings yeah. like that who went yeah. to bars before they became a yeah. Christian. <laughs> yeah. They know how to dance. Yeah, that's right. Well, that, All the my, rest of us, no. We my don't. point was it was because I was with my daughter. He must have thought it was a square dance. <laughs> well, I think it's just the whole being, and, and you're not, it's not awkward because you're being told instructions on what to do one step after the other and you're having to work together. So you, so you and me, well, I got right. his, it was so, fun. It was, yeah. I got his point. What he was trying to say was if Jay's Rogers is going to do this, y'all can yeah, do this. Right. That's I what he was fun. saying. I, but I like to dance. I mean, you've seen me dance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's more of a build. Well, we laughed about it because we did the first thing where you you run down the thing and come back, and then you do the round each way, and then you do the peel around and go under the arch. And so we did that at first. And of course, I was winded after about five minutes. Well, after watching that halftime show the other night, I really think I dance better than I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the next thing I want to ask about is that. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that, that you guys were brought up in a positive way, uh, that that was something good. And look, no, our people good. loved it. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Well, did laughed. you ever talk about uh, grits? If you're going to do it on true I never grit. got to grits. This is why we need to have Jason at the marriage retreat, because you always come up with a unique. I talked about true grit, the movie, but right. I didn't How talk about bring grits. up grits? So I'm I'm gonna do at some point. So Missy and I also did. What would you? That was 100 percent your design. So what do you want to call that? We just called it our the Valentine's dinner at Logtown. So we decided to do a few events this year. We didn't do very many last year, and um, I re- kind of regretted doing all of that because we we got Logtown Estate and we wanted to use it for the public too in, in our community. So um, Kendall and I, Kendall is the property manager, and that's Phyllis's daughter-in-law. She does a phenomenal job. She loves it. She does all the weddings and the events and deals with all of the people and all the problems and just loves it all. And I wanted to mention that since you brought him up, that because a lot of people have followed Phyllis, obviously being now in our life and in our world. And so obviously, you know, she was hoping her kids would move here, but they had lives, you know, they got married, but because the opportunity of working out there, which is Kendall's dream job and Joel is able to help and do what he does as well as another thing. So just another opportunity, which is that family can come together and do. Yes. She, she is a godsend out there. She's great. She's amazing. Let's take a break. So one of our sponsors, a net suite. Uh, which is uh, from Oracle. Um, they give us some numbers, Jace, that are very important. They must right. understand numbers. Do you, are you a numbers guy? Well, the only numbers I know, because I do own stock in the company Oracle, yeah. which I actually looked the definition up, and I thought, well, we're kind of oracles of God. They're oracles of software. Yeah. But I didn't know that they own a company called NetSuite, so you can tell us more. About so it. NetSuite is uh, is here to help your business, and there's three numbers that they want us to focus on. Um, the first one is 37,000, which is a big number. Yeah. Uh, that's the number of businesses which have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system. It streamlines accounting, um, financial management, inventory, HR, all the things you need for your business. 37,000 businesses have made this switch to these guys. The second number is 25, and that's the, their age. They've been doing this 25 years. That's how long NetSuite has been in business, helping uh, businesses be better. Um, 
They do more with less. They close their books in days, not weeks, and they drive down costs. And all of us in business know that's how you make money. And the last number is number one, because your business is one of a kind. You get a customized solution for all of your key performance indicators, which they call KPIs, in one effective system and one source of truth. One truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, improve your margins, everything you need in one place. So here's what you do to get it. Uh, You download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance, and it's absolutely free at netsuite.com slash fill. That's netsuite.com slash fill. You get your own KPI checklist. It's free, netsuite.com slash fill. So, yeah, so finish that. I just so, wanted to mention um, that, that it's been a real blessing. Yeah, I set so, it up. I mean, look, not only did she do a good job, it was torrential <laughs> it was, rain. I, Missy opened this up to the public, and I thought, you know, to tell you, to be honest, I've already told Missy this, so this is not going to be like an intervention. <laughs> but she asked me to do this, and I said yes. Of course, then I forgot about it. Of course. She asked me a month ago. And so a couple days before, uh, I was lining up the weekend here, and she's like, oh, we got that thing Saturday. It's like, what thing? And so it was this thing. If I could just get you to look at the calendar. It's on the calendar. I do not like calendars. <laughs> so that's not my problem. <laughs> I don't like be to put to be put in a box. It's just information. It's I just know. information it's just right there in front of me. For. I don't like that. They tried to put Jesus in a box, and how'd that work out? I don't, I don't have an argument for this. <laughs> he come out. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we sold tickets to this event, had it catered, Kindle decorated, everything. We're watching the weather because she wanted to do it in the barn outside and thought, okay, well, it's probably going to be cold. February is usually our coldest month. We'll get curtains. We'll rent heaters. I said, okay, you do whatever you want to do. We'll show up. It is torrential rain. We have not seen rain like this. When? Months. Um, yeah. Months. It's been a dry year. I, I mean, I mean it, it was started raining, raining and pouring silent. and never stopped. It just would not stop. <laughs> I thought there's there's no way people are going to show up. I mean, these tickets oh, are thought, pre-bought, but yeah. they're. I, I mean, said no I one would just let there. that ticket go. I I just would not think that they would be coming. Everyone came except one couple. And it's because they had a sickness in their family, and they had told oh, us a shocked. few days before they weren't coming. So every other couple came, and when we got there, it was wet inside. The curtains were blowing, and they were having the best time. It was shocking. Everybody was loving it. It was shocking that (laughs) people (laughs) were there and were doing this. They were celebrating each other. It was a date. Yeah. It was a date. And our date was, had a bumpy start because since I had forgotten about this and now we're two days in, well, Missy then told me that we were going to (laughs) speak. What? (laughs) Yeah. So I thought, well... Um, I got to say something. And so I jotted down a few notes hurriedly. But then when it got time to go, I couldn't remember what I was going to talk about. And I couldn't remember where those notes were. And we were home all day. I was studying. All day to prepare. I was was just guessing here, Missy. But probably when you told him a month ago that he forgot, you probably said we're going to say something. Say some encouraging words. Yeah, right. right, right. Well, I thought it was like, thanks for being here. I didn't know it was going to be a (laughs) presentation. So I asked her to drive so I could find whatever I jotted down a couple days ago and refresh my memory. Because you didn't have time to do that all day at Because the I was studying for this podcast. Okay, anyway, I'm just clarifying. Four, okay. four podcasts coming up and one marriage party. And so, uh, but I didn't realize that it was driving, driving rainstorm. And so now she's driving. And so we get about a mile into the journey and almost had a wreck. And it was not Missy's fault, but it just, it created some bad energy because I hollered at her because this car was coming down Arkansas Road and there's a shoulder on Arkansas Road, which is illegal to get into and make the turn. They had their blinker on. 
And at the last second before they started turning, they're in the shoulder. Missy like propels to take off. And I noticed that that car turned the blinker off and accelerated. Oh boy. Uh, we're fixed to yeah. hit within two seconds. So my holler was not like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and Missy, look, and this car just come oblivious of us, just come zooming in front of us. And so uh, then it was kind of tense then, because now I'm like, well, we could have died right here. <laughs> and so let's talk about the that. The next thing that happened. Well, do we have to go into every detail? Basically, no. it was just really <laughs> tough driving conditions. It I was, was doing the best that I could. He was. was criticizing every move I made. So finally, no, when we got to Logtown. This is just what you want to be happening before you're going to talk to about marriage. When we got to I saw finally said, <laughs> that's it. I shoved it in park. Yeah. I got, I scooted over in the back seat. I said, please bring us the rest of the way in. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. She, she, but leaving out the details... I think <laughs> it's not giving an accurate depiction. See, this we is were what, on. Do you want me to come back? Yes. Do you want me to come back? It wasn't your fault. We were on 165, and she hit her brakes, and our car started sliding. Oh, you sliding. did a hydroplane? Yeah, we started sliding, and she avoided the wreck. It was great. But still, it's like, well, that was wreck number two. That was <laughs> so. So when we got on the levee, I shouldn't have said this, so we're on a levee that's one lane that's the lead in to our place. Yep. And it is just pouring. The ditches are full. And so I just said, whatever you do, because we were coming up there and all the cars are parked on the levee. Well, it's a one lane road. It's no problem. You can ease around them if it's dry, but now it's raining so hard. I just said, whatever you do, drive slow. And she just put it in park. <laughs> You do it. So then when I step out of the car, I stepped in, I thought the road, but the water went over my boot. And yeah. so now my right foot's wet, which, so I endured pain and misery the rest of the night because <laughs> it was chilly and my right foot is now wet. Did you call that karma, Miss? <laughs> so I get I'm in. I'm not saying anything at this so point. So I get in and sneak around and we make it and uh so i'm just saying it i thought it was ironic that we're going to get up and talk about marriage and how to get along and we had this episode which i think was perfect was it still too fresh to not just go there oh no, oh, we, no i did oh that's, oh, we, say, I that's what went. i would have done well, I would've... because kendall did great she had some kind of icebreaker questions that they talked about at their tables before we got there and she's like let me just ask y'all a few of those so we had no idea what they were this is and, an unannounced q a yes yeah. i said let's go for it and one of them was which one of you is the most impatient and oh boy. I raised my hand. <laughs> I was very honest. Yeah. And she was like, do you have an example? I said, actually, yes, I do. <laughs> so we told the story of pulling up it there and saying, you know what? I'm done. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm done. You take over. I bet everybody was laughing. because They were. They were, yeah. they I mean, were this, laughing. It went good. I mean, because Missy, she put a lot of pressure on me. and uh, <laughs> Well, she did. Cause she was, I said, what do you want me to do in this speech? And Which is why I was riding the passenger seat. Because she said, well, just start off and be funny. I'm like, babe, did, I went through the speech. 90% of the things that I say that people laugh at, it, well, it was an accident. It's hard to just be funny. So, uh, and then I was really nervous when we started having to answer the questions that we we weren't prepared for. Right. Because it was like, who you know, what... Who is the one that is more impatient? Well, I'm like, do I raise my hand? Do I, do I call it like Let's be I Be honest. Sleep? So were you just you were holding back. All right. So I, I wasn't planning this, Jace, but I'm a, since you just brought this up, I'm, I'm going to go here. This is a impromptu mailbag from Robert H. Jr. Uh, he said, first of all, I want to thank you guys for being a light in the world. Um, he's trying to do his own podcast. He mentioned he loved the show. And then he says this. He said, but now I get to listen to Jace because he's no longer able to watch the podcast. I listen to him trying to understand why people find him funny. It is his matter of factness, and he has fact in quotes, that makes him hilarious. He sounds serious, so serious it comes off as funny. 
So, Chase, don't try to be funny. Just continue to speak as you are led, and don't be shocked when people laugh. It's all good. Yeah. What's this guy's name? <laughs> Robert H. Jr. We need to send him something. That guy gets me. <laughs> we finally, when you said that, I thought, man, I remember reading a letter about this very thing. See? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. And so when t- people say, because our our showrunner does that all the time, she's like, okay, I think it's time for something funny, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to remember. I just pull out my and funny all of bag. This, <laughs> in Ephesians 3, this mystery, which you have been describing, is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. That brings us all together. That's exactly right. Well, That's now rain I... or shine, sleet or snow. <laughs> and heavy rain. Let's, let's take another break. So, Dad, has there been any uh, breakdowns in, in your home, sweet home, anything yeah, my going coffee, on? My, my coffee Coffee pot? pot? Yeah, just kind of had backfired on me and <laughs> had to get another one. So a new coffee pot. Ran out of heat or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, and that's bad for you because you're a coffee man. You got to have your yeah. coffee, right? Stout coffee. Stout, stout. <laughs> I'm not sure the Home Shield, <laughs> American <laughs> Home Shield is going to cover your coffee Probably pot. Probably the coffee pot, no, uh, because there's some things that apply and some that don't. Well, everything else is ginning. So. There you go. Well, there, so American Home Shield is what we're here to talk to you about. Uh, not sure if the coffee pot will be covered, but, you know, dishwashers, um, leaky faucets, faulty water heaters, uh, HVAC systems. There's a lot of different things. We've had that through the years. Oh, yeah. All of this has happened. And you ne- and you need it. I mean, it's, it's, these things are expensive. So AHS is what they're called, American Home Shield. Uh, they have a plan uh, that works for you and your budget, uh, and it's simple. When a covered item in your home breaks and you're under their shield, their system— American Home Shield and their trusted and qualified pros will fix or replace it based on the coverage limits in your agreement. So what you do is you go to ahs.com slash contracts, and you're going to get coverage details. It's going to tell you about your limit amounts, your fees, your limitations, exclusions, all these things. Right now, as our listeners, for Unashamed, you get $50 off. So that's just to get you going. And you go to ahs.com slash fill to save that 50 bucks. American Home Shield, protect what you don't expect. CAHS.com slash contracts for coverage details, limit amounts, fees, limitations, and exclusions. That'd be handy. So in my presentation, I did bring up Ephesians 5, which, but I brought up, I got to the point of when he talked about the women's role, and the husband's role, and I was going to make a point about in the women's role, you have all sorts of things, and Missy read Proverbs 31. It was very good, and and she did. Do you want to talk about what you did? Well, my idea, what we did is, as I read Proverbs 31, wives, think about one of the things that you will hear that you need to work on in your marriage or in your life. And then hus- and husbands think about what your wife really rocks at mm-hmm. in, in one of those. And so when we finished, I told the women to whisper to their husbands what they want to work on out of that passage. And then husbands return it by saying, well, you rock at, and then say which one it was. So it was a little bit of encouraging and challenging yeah. for the wives. So she did a great job, but I had, my humor point was going to be, there's a lot of stories and, and chapters about all these qualities of women. And I was going to make a joke when it got to my turn, but she went first. I was going to say, but man, he just basically gave you one thing. And I said, because, you know, I was going to make a joke that we tend to be a one track man. And I was going to make a joke before I read something earth shattering about that we're, we are to love our wives as Christ loved the church which is the one really thing that trumps everything. Cause when you really think about what that means, that's very profound. He gave his life for us. So, but I was going to make a joke about sex, but, but Missy stole my thunder <laughs> when before she, <laughs> 
she went Phil on me, and before she read <laughs> the women thing, it before we got, yeah, it. we didn't discuss it together. She's like, "Now look, I'm not going to address the men because y'all just thinking about one thing, sex." <laughs> and nobody really laughed at first. It was kind of like a, <gasps> <laughs> and then I went, "Amen," <laughs> and they laughed. Really? So it was a tag team joke. So it still, you know, hit home. But my, what I did because when Missy said she wanted me to do something funny. So, uh, and I hope Phil's fine with this because you said this. So what I decided to do, because I talked about, we had already talked about the trouble we had getting there. Just because it's, when you're married, it brings out the best in you, but it also brings out the worst in you. you and sometimes it's raining and things happen. And, sometimes and you almost have there's, wrecks. There's temptations there, but you work it out yeah. and you keep the big things, the big thing. But I, I, Wanted to say that we all bring a certain amount of baggage to a marriage. You know, you brought that up. But a lot of that, we usually think of bad decisions or bad choices, but a lot of it is how you were raised. Yeah. And so I was like, look. It's not necessarily bad baggage, it's just baggage. Half of my childhood was, I was raised by people who were not in Jesus. Right. So some baggage came about by that. Sure. And, and so I decided to do some quotes by Phil because I, I had to say, look, part of the culture shock that Missy and I decided to join, that was where we had a lot of problems because, I mean, she just, I used to say, you know, we didn't, we don't have a lot in common, but there's a past podcast where she proved me wrong <laughs> on that. Debunked that theory. Yeah. We, over the years, we've developed some commonality that I wasn't <laughs> aware of. So you were right, but it was it was harder at first because I would rather be in the woods. I was trained by, you know, Phil was a man's man, especially early on. And so he had some of these statements that he said when we were kids. And now you probably remember them. So I decided to do these quotes and I said, look, I had to overcome these. Now, some of them were great. The reason I brought up the grits yep. is one of Phil's quotes that he, he says that, uh, you know, people who get married and and no one knows how to cook and they say, oh, we're not going to worry about it because we're going to live off love. And he said, I'll tell you what, you'll starve to death, yeah. <laughs> which was a great, great quote. Love. That's why I brought up the grits. Yeah. But I, 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 so I just listed a few of the quotes because I thought they would be funny and they were. And so the first one, I gave uh, was when God made a woman, he made a very strange creature. <laughs> yep. Everybody That's laughed. a long one. That's a good. I was like, but you got to remember, I was told that many times. <laughs> so my instinct. Did that my, turn out to be true? That did turn out to be true. <laughs> but I'm Especially saying. Especially from a man's perspective, yeah. they're very strange. But it also became a problem because I couldn't just write off everything as just strange. <laughs> At some point, no. I've got to roll up my sleeves yes. and deal with this strange creature. Okay, so I can't. Do so, uh, and strange is not always necessarily bad. It was like Randy Kirby's description of John Howard. He said he's wonderfully odd. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a great way to describe John Howard. So then I had this one where a situation becomes a crisis when cattle or women stampede, and I said. <laughs> Now, you may be wondering why I've attached that to Phil Robertson, because he used to say William Shakespeare said that. But now, if you go Google that. Yeah, we that, couldn't track that down to Well, Shakespeare. now, if you Google it, it either says anonymous or Phil Robertson. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Dad, you said it enough where you're the one that originally. <laughs> so that got a thunderous uh, That's pretty funny. bolt. So another thing I said I had to work through is, <laughs> I do remember Phil sitting me down. is like, okay. Here's what you're looking for in a woman. Three things. And you probably remember this. You remember? Does she carry a Bible? Yep. Can she cook? Look. Will she pick your ducks? And then he would add, because if she don't pick your ducks, she'll pick your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> These are all quotes from Phil. That he's in Do you remember that one, Dad? In my brain. Oh, the ups and downs of... <laughs> Childhood. 
Now, I got to some serious ones, you know. I said one of the things that I I had. forgot if she won't pick her nose, she'll pick her pocket. That's pretty funny, though. Uh, I did get into a couple of serious ones where Phil told me at, that, you know, because those were kind of fun, and it's like, yeah. But I got into the one about a woman wants something she can't have because I remember staring at the ceiling several times thinking, what does that mean? <laughs> because if I go with her, isn't that, doesn't that mean it's over? That's right. That she has Coming you. out of the 50s and 60s, that's kind of what it was like. Yeah. The, you yeah. know, <clears throat> it causes trouble. Yeah. You know, marriage problems. They, it's, I, I came and saw a whole uh, department of, of women and the roles they played. Yeah. First of all, they were in poor and I mean, it, it was to, to get good, godly kindness, love, gentleness, faithfulness. That's what the women of the fifties and sixties. Right. And then, then that began to. Well, culture changed for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, culturally, that became that was a bad thing. Yeah. You know, and still, you know, we've been w- really women had a tough job coming up in the fifties and sixties. A lot of poor black we were poor. Yeah. I mean, literally, we were, but and then that, but to come out of that with love, faithfulness, gentleness, it's uh, it's asking for a lot. Right. Well, back to our original thesis with Jesus, that becomes possible. So, just a reminder, uh, Dad's new book. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. Why Jesus is your greatest hope on earth and in eternity. Uh, It's going to be coming out March the 12th, but we're trying to get folks to pre-order it, uh, and the publisher has offered something great if you pre-order. If you go to icouldberwrongbutidoubtit.com and you pre-order, you're going to get your choice of either Uncanceled, Theft of America's Soul, or Your Daily Fill uh, as a a gift just for signing up and uh, pre-ordering the book. So check it out, icouldberwrongbutidoubtit.com. Jace, you get a lot of, uh, I don't know, kind of out there emails from some of our unashamed nation from time to time. Have you ever received any that you're like, whoa? I do. I'm not sure how they got my number. (laughs) But I'm also not sure what my liver looks like. So some things are just unknown. Perfect lead in. So I got one of those emails. I was like, whoa, someone sent me an email just this past week and said, my husband needs that liver stuff you're talking about on the podcast, but I can't remember the address. Well, because we do so this ad so much, I was able to tell her getliverhelp.com. And she sent me back a note and said, my husband's liver thanks you. And so already there are uh, unashamed listeners that are listening to this podcast We talk about the health of our liver because of our friends at Get Liver Help, uh, which is liver health formula, actually. Uh, And they've got data that shows that fatty liver uh, leads to heart failure, and you're three and a half times more likely to have that heart failure if you have a fatty liver. About a third of Americans struggle with this, and so a lot of people are at risk. And the reason why is we know your liver is sort of your body's filter system, cholesterol, alcohol, Tylenol, all these things that come at your liver, you need it to be healthy. A sluggish fatty liver uh, makes us gain weight and lose energy, and we don't want that. For decades now, your liver has helped you with over 500 key functions every day, so it's time to help your liver. So here's what you do. You go to getliverhelp.com. It's an all-natural supplement. It contains 11 clinically proven botanicals that help recharge and protect your liver. Uh, It's going to ignite your fat-burning metabolism. Uh, It's going to boost your energy, and it's going to transform how you look and feel. Try Liver Health Formula. Receive a free bottle of blood sugar formula that helps reduce your sugar cravings as well. Liver Health Formula gets you going getliverhelp.com slash unashamed get your free bonus gift that's getliverhelp.com slash unashamed so anyway but that led me to i kind of gave some l's about what i thought the key to marriage was and you know one of them was loyalty and i gave a good quote from phil where he said You may think the grass is greener on the other side, but the grass is not greener. It's meaner. Remember saying that? (laughs) 
<laughs> no, that was a good quote. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, I did do some negative ones, too, because uh, Phil told me after a girl broke up with me one time, he's like, never trust a woman. <laughs> That was probably bad advice. <laughs> you know? bit less. And so I kind of struggle yeah. with that yeah. because, you know, when I got to First Corinthians 13, which was our kind of theme verse for the night, when it says love always trusts, because I remember reading that thinking, no, love, you know, this is, you have to be vulnerable. And you know, looking back, I erroneously said, this is, uh, what, what did I use? I said something, she was a, uh, oh, I said, I, I call her Miss Sharp Tongue. I meant that she was. She would tell you what she thought. Well, they yeah. they they were finding their way in the teenage years, yeah. and you 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 you're learning how to get along with your mate. A lot of things can happen, but I will say, uh, and I have said, I said, I withdraw that now regarding Missy. I said, she's no longer Miss Sharp Tongue. She's way better. And she can cook. He's changed your description. Isn't I was giving you her You won him over with you your You won him over. <laughs> she won me over by, you know, she's in the kitchen now. She's <laughs> and, there we go. And what she's cooking is is downright delicious. Oh, she it's she like mom. I was a shock to my system. I said, Sharp Tongue has, <laughs> has graduated out of that. So... And I, I that, that's that, but... why we had to have that talk. The fact that you can't, and Missy did something really good that night because she talked about even going back to our kids and, and we, which we've done on many times and, and previous occasions. And we talked about where we could have done things better. And uh, it's amazing how it diffused our kids. Yeah, because all kids get bitterness and rebellion towards their parents. It's just part of the cycle of life. I think some As of it, it turns out, Jace, you and this woman sitting right here, and they, and the way they raised their young people, you know, I'm, I I could tell. What's that oldest boy's name? Reed. Reed. <laughs> when Reed Reed had his ups and downs, but I, you you factor it all in and look at it now, thirty years later, y'all did a masterful job raising them well thank you phil but you know i think it was the they're lord still children of faith if they, yeah. that, that's instilled in them oh this kids. really is the family you've it, done well there both of you have the family really is it projects being a part of the family of god i mean you remember that ephesians 5 passage he eventually gets down there and he's like you know i'm talking about husbands and wives you may think that but i'm talking about christ and the church yeah. And we're part of his family. The reason it's written, Jace, is there's this struggles. Well, that's what I'm as saying. As we mature in the faith, it just, it just stir, it's a struggle. But God uses imperfect people to get Jesus out to the world. He also uses imperfect people to raise godly sons and daughters. And that's just the way it is. I mean, I they, said they did a good job. Well, you say, I think mean, they did great. And I think it shows you also, like mine and Lisa's marriage could not be more different than y'all two, and yet we've been partners in the gospel uh, this whole time. So it also shows you that you don't have to have the same experiences at all to then merge into the idea of kingdom work, because that's what we all do together. And that's that's an encouragement for you guys out there, because look, every family, you, you know, your family, so you have family issues that you deal with. Uh, when Lisa talks about Phyllis coming in, because you know, all of a sudden we're we've all been together as one group for all the years we you know, forty plus years now. Yep. And all of a sudden, we have Phyllis come along, and so you got a whole other family that interjects into our family, and you're trying to make that work. And it's interesting because Lisa, for the first time, noticed after 40 years, she said, I'm not sure your dad knows my name. I said, well, he knows your name. She said, Who no, said he, this now? This is Lisa. Oh. She said, he only calls me Al's woman. He said, I call out there, and I say, I need to talk to Miss Kay. And he said, Miss Kay is Al's woman. And so the other day, recently, she said, Phil, do you know my name? Dad said, "Yeah, I know your dad." And so then he didn't say it. He just there was a pause there. <laughs> then she said, well, "What is it?" <laughs> and so Dad said, "Lisa." And she said, "Okay, I was just checking." <laughs> because yeah, well, the difference in me and you is when she said that. If Missy would have said, "I'm not sure your dad knows my name," I would have said. Well, I'm not sure he knows my name on a daily basis. But, <laughs> but his point, but, she, her point in saying this, she does this in a presentation recently because she talked about how different dad has been with Phyllis. 
compared to how we've you know, seen she, it she, interact I, with women in our family, including daughters. She just walked in here with her artist husband yesterday about 5.30. <laughs> Tony. Again, again, the they name. They showed up, and uh, they brought supper. She yep. cooked a pot of rice, a pot of beans. Yep. She walked in. She said, "This, you know, we we we're furnishing them food for supper tonight." I said, "Well, good." So, I, I see growth. Well, of course, among and, our long lost. But daughter. I. But but my point is that we see growth in you because as you've gotten older, you've gotten I would say sweeter. Would be the word, just like what you just described with with Jason, and Missy, I, and I've seen that with Phyllis a lot because she, you're different with her than you, and that's the daughter in law have noticed. Certainly, Lisa has noticed, and so that was her point when she was talking about that. Is you know we get the idea that people can never change how they really are, but really we all can change. I haven't been mad over some issue in years, right? I yeah. just you've gotten sweeter. Bill Smith was the same way. As he well, got older, Bill got sweeter. The last time I got mad is when I got looked like an idiot because I brought up the fact that I think when we get have family gatherings due to our older members of our family, we should all wear name tags. <laughs> and ever everybody's like, That's the dumbest <laughs> idea. But now after having this discussion, I'm gonna reaffirm that. If you think that Phil or anybody else in our family has forgotten your name, let's just all wear name tags when we all get together. Well, I will admit now that. it went from you four to modern day, and you say it's about fifty. It's, about, it's almost it's sixty. More than fifty. Not, almost yeah. sixty different individuals. But it's who you hang around because I'm with Jace Moore, so I know your grandchildren's name. But I will admit, with Willie's large growing family i have to sometimes think it through to remember rebecca's the kid i mean you have to work at it uh, with that can i interrupt y'all you can <laughs> I w- we want to know what you think because we have our lunch before you do it though let's take our last break i have breaking news that i was just Uh-oh. given permission to tell Wait a minute. okay breaking news Yes, we've held this in for a few weeks. But Reed and Brighton are on baby number three. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's impressive. Uh, 11-year-old kid sent that to us. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so we're super excited about that. They so are Dad, now there's, they're, we're growing. We're speaking of growing. Bill's keeping yes. this up. Go write that down. What's going to be this one's name? Well, we don't know yet. They don't know. They don't, don't even know. know uh, They're not going to find out the, yeah. the sex of the baby because they have one apiece and they want it to be a surprise to them. But, you know, like when Jay said, um, come, you know, come be on the podcast, I hesitated because, first of all, sorry, don't super enjoy this, but I feel like it's necessary because y'all do such a great job with Unashamed and your demographic is the men. And I know the women want to they listen to it too, but if it's been a while since I've sat at this table and it's, it's mainly because I just didn't want to. <laughs> and I didn't want to because life was really hard last year. And I thought if I come sit at this table, there's nothing that I can talk about. I can't because we're living through so much stuff yeah. at the time. Yeah, and you may so, jump like, in here. I, I don't want you to start Just crying. like, no, no, like, <laughs> oh, I'm good now because right. everything is going so well. Yeah. I mean, we're on the other side of so many really tragedies that happened last year. Yeah. And one of them was with Brighton's family. Yeah. And just getting through all of that with the emotional trauma that they went through, the physical trauma that she was helping with her sister-in-law, just, you know, because she's a nurse, Brighton is. And so all of that was really overwhelming. And then seven days later, Mia had a really hard surgery and then an extra hard recovery that we did not see coming. I mean, we we ended up back in the hospital four or five days later, and no one knows that. We didn't put that out there, but we were back in the hospital with her, getting her fluids and trying to get her to stop, you know, throwing up, vomiting, and she just was not intaking anything. It was really, really a rough recovery. She lost like 13 pounds or something. If you see Mia, she's tiny. So she now is doing fantastic. And her head is much harder than the rest of her body (laughs) because she is determined that she's going to get well. 
Every time this happens, she's determined she's going to get well. And even at Sadie's LO conference, which was just maybe two weeks after that surgery, Mm -hmm. she wanted to go so bad they put her in a wheelchair and wheeled her around the, the convention center. So her her determination and, and will is what gets her through so much. And now she's studying abroad with, with Lipscomb. And we did not think that was possible either. So she's doing fantastic. Brighton's family is, you know, dealing with the loss of those two children. Um, but one thing that is what I've called a God wink is when Brighton and Reed told us at Christmas that they were expecting their third child. Of course, I'm squealing and screaming, and Jace is looking at me like I've lost my mind. Yeah, because we like, were what? opening presents, and she she opened, uh, and it was just a cardboard cutout kind of thing that said, I forgot what exactly it said, baby number three. or On the way. On mm-hmm. the way. But I didn't, it was addressed to us, but Missy opened it, and she didn't have time to say, hey, she just reacted nuts. <laughs> you weren't paying attention until she went nuts. Yeah. Well, it was yeah. we were opening the gift. It, you know what I mean? She just went, I mean, crazy. And I thought, what is wrong? <laughs> what what has you said? Happened? No, you want you to say, oh, this finally happened. She snapped. <laughs> he looked at me. He's like, what 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 is it? Because I got up and I ran over and I hugged Brighton and I had tears in my eyes and he, and Jay said, what? <laughs> Because I thought, what could you think it together? could possibly be? <laughs> I had no idea. What? It's a piece of cardboard that I can't is read. It a, is it a day at the spa? I thought, <laughs> boy, that must be an awesome piece of cardboard. <laughs> Man, is, I thought it was maybe a picture on it. or I, don't know, I thought, boy, you're kind of overdoing it here. Is well, that, the guy. See, he did think Usher was somebody that worked at the stadium. I know. So, he said, yeah. is it the Usher? I was like. No, it's just so sure. But here, here's the God wink about all of this is when Brighton did the math and she got her first um, her first due date, it it is the day that her niece and nephew were killed. Unbelievable. So wow. I asked her how she felt about that, how her brother felt about that and, and her family. And she said at first they started crying, you know. Yep. But then it's like it's something – really awesome and wonderful to look forward to instead of just dreading that anniversary date. Now we're looking forward to a new life that God created. So I just thought that was really amazing the way that they're really they're really delving and really trying to get a grip of that true grit in their faith and seeing that hope. Those well, children who who was we lost, they're still here. Yeah. They'll see them again. That's yes, right. that's yeah, right. That's the beauty of heaven. Mm-hmm. We had a we had a couple, one of our lead couples that had to drop out of the retreat, which Lisa and I had to fill in some gaps because of a similar tragedy this week. Uh, lost a little child that was kind of extended like this situation, and um, you know, it just it took me back to the whole thing with Reed and Brighton because I was talking to him and I said, "Look, you never will know what your role will be, but it may be like." you know, behind the scenes, like providing for a family going through something like this. And I just couldn't, it took me back to, I could not be prouder of Reed and Brighton and the job they did in their family just to be in a support role. Cause there's not a lot you can say in moments like that. You're just having to walk with people. And uh, this couple, I was able to, because of their experiences to then impart some advice to them, just be there in that support role. So, well, you know, that's obviously tragic. In my speech, you know, when we got to the end, this is what I talked about because I talked about loyalty and love, which is what Jesus did for us in love when he gave his life. But I also said, you know, whether you believe in God or not, everyone wants to be loved. I said, just acknowledging that will help your marriage. Everyone wants to be loved. Yeah. And number two, no one wants to lose a loved one. Yeah. You just... Don't want that to happen, whether you believe in God or not. Yeah. And that's the beauty of what God offers in Jesus with his His plan and his death and his burial and his resurrection. It's because we know at the resurrection, we're all going to be loved forever. It's going to be the best version of ourselves, right. new bodies. No loved ones will be lost. Correct. I mean, you're participating in eternal relationships, which was the foundation of our marriage. But that's what keeps us from being at each other's throats or Missy's right. I mean, last year was very difficult for us. Throw in having a baby 
That was not well, you ours. You also finished up a TV show. <laughs> that was on top of raised, but so it was. It was a tough year, but I think this is what we're supposed to be on this earth. We're trying to be Jesus to other people, and it does not come without difficulty and tragedy and the ups and downs of life. But and a visual encouragement of that is the chosen. So we went to we we got to go see the very few first few episodes of season four and you know episode three deals with and i not spoil this is coming out when yeah, after the 14th next week yeah so that'll be out of theaters by then but i won't say exactly what happened but there is a loss that happens in a very tragic way and it's a fictional character so but you're invested in this in this story and you see this loss and there's going to be so many questions, but I told Jace on the way home, I thought this is so relatable to so many people because right now we're at the cliffhanger of how are they going to deal with this and how, what is Jesus going to say to them? Yeah. And I'm waiting to see how they play that out. We know that, again, like what you said, Phil, we're going to get to see those children again. They're completely yep. innocent. That's right. It's another motivation to get it right with the Lord, get a relationship with Him, and go see your loved ones in heaven. But but dealing with the loss and the hurt here on earth is a real, real thing and very tangible. And it's it's a one step in front of the other day by day. But Jesus is the way to the way to go. Excellent. Well, Missy, thank you for saying yes and coming sure. on the podcast. Uh, I loved it. I, I love it anytime. And I usually like to make Jay squirm, but he wasn't even squirming today. He was so <laughs> he was squirming. Yeah, he was so comfortable. Yeah, that? we'll make plans to come to Logtown Faith Family Freedom Weekend. We're doing it again. Ooh, are we really? Yeah. We're doing that again? We're doing it again, and we're giving plenty of notice this time. Last year, we gave like a month's notice, and we had over a thousand people come. So now we're giving a lot more notice, and Excellent. we're gonna so we got crank the tees. Up. We'll get some details on that and tell you in yep. future podcasts because last year was fantastic. So. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next time on Unashamed. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes, and don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else. Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.